Okay, just to uh, give you an idea of FAO's work, traditionally we've been since the 1970s producing opportunities for people to share technical knowledge in fisheries. And this really means disseminating tools for species identification on target resources, so that the quality of the data coming back and the understanding of habitats function and structure is improved. And, and it's been a very static um, production in that the kind of production we could do was bring the world's experts together to talk about the species and then describe them in, in documents. And these documents would potentially have identification trees, but it, it would take some challenge for someone aboard a vessel or someone without heavy skills and interests to use these products to really be able to identify fish in all their forms that arrive on the boat, on the dock, in the market, and so on. And these tools have been very successful because people have spoken about FAO's work as being valued, but whether they're fit for purpose for everyone and the requirements today is, is a question which we're dealing with right now. Uh, we've also, you know, held these kind of static database systems which describe overall what's happening in fisheries whether in this way it's a database on all the management of sharks around the world and, and the types of regulations the type, types of systems we use for different species and you can go into each species and find out what's really happening for those but again you have to have that particular interest you have to have that technical knowledge to follow through on these types of tools they aren't really user friendly for everyone on the ground or on the water so the future and the innovation technologies, you know, three questions I think we need to consider as a group is why, why are we doing this? What is it and how do we do it? And this is what, you know, we try to have a, an overall broad discussion in the three day event that FAO hold, held um, a couple of months ago at the end of July. And I'll talk you through a little bit the kinds of questions that we dealt with and, and what we found. So the most important question is why? why? Why are we getting involved in all this AI? Well, the, the truth is business as usual in harvesting signal and understanding of fisheries needed for management to ensure use is sustainable is insufficient. We all know that. We're all grasping slightly in the dark to make decisions. And we need the minimum amount of data that allows a manager to make decisions in his hands. And we, we, are, we don't have that. We, we don't have that for a number of reasons. And secondly, the glo global requirement for talking to the social environment, sustainability of fisheries continues to increase. So the bar we're gonna be held for, accountable for is increasing. So these kind of, these are the fundamental questions about why we need better information. So what, what is the innovation technologies? Well, I, I'd like you to think of it potentially in this way. You know, can we see it? In other words, can we detect it? Can we recognize it? In other words, once it's detected, is there a way of identifying what it is, be that a species or an activity? And then can we harvest useful signal? And that, by I mean useful signal, understanding which is useful to inform management. And, and this might sound like very basic questions, but they are the fundamental questions because we don't really want to go down a technology route where we have fantastic tools which aren't replicable, aren't scalable, don't really deliver what we need for management and are, you know, advertised as fantastic but aren't really useful on the water. So when we think about the how, we really need to think about the scale of what we really need and, and how this is applicable. And we're only starting to have our eyes open now while we go around the world and see these little pockets of innovation about what we're really talking about. Initially, you know, even as FAO, we think, OK, what species is it? And, uh, you know, can we help people understand so that they can do better recording? Well, we're finding very quickly that that's not really what this is offering us. This is offering us a completely new way of doing the business that we do, be it coming in through a genetic window of actually being able to use the types of tools to immediately find out a range of things about either species or subspecies. Is it from the scale of looking at the whole fishery, in other words, vessel counts from the sky, or is it more of a biome thing where you're looking at the whole environment? and what kind of scale these genetic technologies allow us to view 
is going to be very important about how we invest in these technologies. In other words, do we put our money in at, at one point or another point, noting that we aren't doing the same business as we did when we had a piece of paper and a pencil? We have new opportunities and we've got to think outside of the box about what's really possible and what we need to invest in. We need to think about cost discipline. It's no longer a case that the, the fisher on the dock is going to be measured for his catch and his catch size and his species complements. We're finding now that the ability to harvest data across the whole value chain, be that all the way from what's happening on a boat right the way to what's happening in someone's house, is giving us a complete different view of the sustainability of fisheries. And some of the biggest gains are not happening at the capture end, they might be happening at the value chain end, be that reducing the waste, making sure that the opportunity for the consumer to see the product offers value. And, and all these opportunities have to be thought of about how do we integrate or how do we get cross comparability of this data right across the value chain. And, and the way we should think of it is more from a social environmental system. And we're not particularly just interested in the ecology of a fish stock. And then we've got to think of cost and repli replicability and acceptance. It's pointless if we come out with something that's theoretically brilliant, but can't and isn't wanted in the hands of the people we're trying to influence. So these questions keep coming up and, and they did over the three days where we had an event. I'm going to talk you through a little bit about what we did at this artificial intelligence for a digital blue planet, which, which started off really as a, you know, can we tell different species apart? Can we count from different forms of imagery, be that still imagery or be that a, uh, a video? And, and can we potentially take measures? In other words, how, how large fish were. And we had talkers from all around the world, over 800 registered participants, 40 presenters, presentations across fisheries, aquaculture and value chains, interactive discussions and such like. And there's a link in this presentation that will take you to the resources. But these are the kind of presentations that happen over the, over the three days. And we have morning and afternoon. And each of these presentations has a small description. And then we're going to link you know, we're putting them up this week onto YouTube. So you can skim through the small presentation idea of what they are actually talking to, whether that's, you know, handling big data or whether it's actually just identification and measurement of fishes or other, and then allow you to go and watch those presentations. The good news is those presentations are literally five to seven minutes long. What we didn't want to do is bore people with presentations. We wanted to get to the nub of what people were doing, what advances they were making, and what future they were seeing. And those are the three questions that each of the presenters were given. And by doing that, we get to the nub of why you might be interested in following up with that person or, we'll, or that group. And we'll be putting, for example, their contact details and like on, 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 on resources which FAO makes available and out. Our role is very much not seen as FAO is going to walk away with this and come back to the fishery and aquaculture world with all the products, because the innovations that are being made are being made everywhere from small universities in the Philippines, as you'll see with the, the crab app that they've come up with, to, to marketplaces in Japan. You know, these things are happening everywhere by many groups and, and FAO sees its role as helping to facilitate the conversation and bringing that conversation from the water from people such as yourselves back to that innovation community saying this is what we want. This is how we want it equally bringing those groups together and saying, how about you meet with you and potentially we'll try and put together some projects downstream of your innovations to allow those innovations to be implemented and for there to be a feedback loop about the, the progress that they're delivering. So as I said, we had uh, almost a thousand participants at these meetings over three days. We spent a bit of time with them going through what are the key themes that an organization, an international organization like FAO might want to set up around digital innovations to help 
umbrella some of these groups of innovations and, and bring community to them, community such as RFMOs, community such as national fisheries bodies, so they can link in with these innovation groups where they see value. And, and that's one of the roles I see for the fish finder group within FAO, making sure that all these little innovations are well described to the fisheries community and equally the fishery community that sends us signal, we pass it back to them and try to collate them under potentially projects and such like so we can get the right type of jobs done and the right type of jobs active on the water and on the ground as soon as possible. And then my last point is we've also got some responsibilities. There's a Rome call, you know, six main principles for how this happens. And it's all about making sure we do this responsibly. So we don't end up leaving groups out. We don't end up um, make, you know, the ones which have got the innovation taking all the spoils. We would like, you know, this to be gender sensitive. We'd like to think of the kinds of questions that are really needed to, to help people in the water, because that's what obviously what FA is more about. So um, that's the end of my presentation. I did put um, an email address at the front, and if anyone wants any more resources about each of these presentations or to help link up, I will pass to Rishi and Tony the links to the YouTube, which they can share with all the participants. And uh, please take some time just to skim through the, uh, the menu of presentations and pick a few that you think might be useful, whether it's tracking tuna from Indonesian small scale fishes all the way to the market and how they do that tuna by tuna, or whether it's actually recognizing the difference between the three different types of mud crab by fishes on the water using handheld telephones in, 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 um, in the Philippines or, or other. So thanks very much for the opportunity of presenting to you.